Alright, hey everyone, welcome back to another video from Elite Lessons Online. I'm going to be covering human geography, okay? We're finally back with human geography. It's been a while, I know. Um, but I'm going to be back on human geography, covering uh, team 3, okay, on cities, right? This part is going to be covering your management of non-hazardous solid waste. I'm only going to be covering part 1 in this video. Part 2 will be the next video, part 7. I mean, okay, there's a lot of parts, right? But basically, part 7 will basically be um, the second half of this um, non-hazardous solid waste chapter which is basically going to be covering your strategies so in this video i'm going to be covering your ecological footprint and the urban metabolism because they are actually quite important concepts you need to understand and you can actually use them okay as a form of evaluation and it in itself can actually come out as a possible 12 mark essay question so you must make sure you understand what on earth they are all right, so there are two important concepts, okay, Eco ecological footprint and urban metabolism. Okay, in short, I'll be calling it footprint and metabolism. Firstly, let's cover ecological footprint. All right, what the footprint actually is, is defined as the land area and natural resource capital on which the city draws to sustain its population and production structure. So essentially, the definition is, it sounds very, very complex, right? But it is basically saying that the footprint defines a certain plot of land from which the city takes its resources from in order to sustain itself for survival. Very, very simple. Okay, so basically a city will have a larger ecological footprint if the city has more people. So the footprint actually takes into account a lot of different factors. Okay, for instance, the, num the amount of resources you use, as well as the amount of waste that is produced, which is why it says that there's a larger eco uh, ecological footprint for a city which is bigger because, firstly, there's a larger population, hence there is a need to take more resources out. And moreover, a greater population will also generate more waste. So as a result, it will have a larger ecological footprint as well. Okay, so a very simple evaluation to put to this is that it is actually able to capture, so this, this is the part where you need to know for your essays, right? It is able to capture the ecological and spatial aspects of sustainability, right? Why do I say this? It's because that it can actually cap, cap, uh, capture from an ecological standpoint how much waste is being generated, as well as to show you spatially, okay, how are there spatial variations, okay? Larger cities will have bigger footprints, smaller cities will have smaller footprints. That can come out for a data response question, okay? But, that being said, it is difficult to quantify the specific land area that is needed. Okay, for example, how do I define how much resources the land is, is drawing from? Uh, for instance, is Singapore actually drawing from the size of itself or is it 20 times more? Right, how do I actually define this amount of land? That could be hard to quantify sometimes. Okay, and moreover, um, the richer income groups may contribute disproportionately. Okay, why? Richer income groups tend to result in higher, uh, it means that there's higher affluence, right? When there's higher affluence, these richer income groups tend to generate more waste. This one is a, it's a no doubt. Okay, higher, the, the richer you are, definitely the more waste you're going to generate. So this could also be an issue in terms of managing this footprint. Okay, it may actually skew the data. Alright, next I've got the metabolism. So the metabolism, urban metabolism is defined as the sum total of technical and socioeconomic processes that occur in cities resulting in growth, production of energy and elimination of waste. So what the urban metabolism is, okay, think of it like actually a metabolism is constantly running. Okay, it is constantly at work. Right, so essentially what it means is that it's an entire um, city, okay, how much um, in that sense is being processed, okay, in exchange for increased economic growth, increased production of anything, energy, as well as to get rid of any waste that is being produced. So it's kind of like a system in itself. And this system basically consists of an input, which goes into the city, which comes out as output. That is what the whole metabolism, uh, metabolism is. So if you need a very simple definition, this is basically it. Okay, Whereby the input goes into the city, it comes out as output. Alright, so most cities have this linear metabolism. But just take note as an evaluation point of view, we should all try to move to a um, circular metabolism okay, in order to promote waste. Uh, not promote waste, oh my gosh, that would be the worst thing to do, right? In order to promote um, the achievement of your SUD as well as to reduce waste. Okay, so a circular metabolism basically refers to this. It is a self-regulating system that basically comes, once again, there's, there always has to be an input, right, which is your resources, your natural resources. So the input comes into the city, but the city takes this input and uses it to that, uses it to for themselves, and then they recycle or reuse it so that it can be churned out as input again, which basically means that in this entire city, there's no output. Okay, any resources that come in, yes, they are coming in, but these resources are constantly being recycled and then they are reused again, hence there is no waste that's actually being produced. And that's why a circular, a circular metabolism is kind of like in a circle, right? It starts with input, and it ends with input as well. 
So this is good. This is very good. Okay. So what is the comparison that you need to know between the urban metabolism and the ecological footprint? This is the important part, all right? Some questions may ask you to compare. So if, you, if they ask you to compare, make sure you know how to compare. Okay, metabolism studies an attempt to quantify the amounts of materials and energy that flow through a city simply measures input and output. So like we've just gone through, we see metabolism tries to to quantify, okay, that means turn the, the kind of resources that are coming in into an, an, um, a specific amount. Okay, and basically it measures very, very generically whereby there is an input and there is an output, that is all. So it doesn't take into account that there could be possible, uh, possibly some waste recycling schemes that are in the city. There could be a possibility that there is um, take-back programs here which occurs in the city. It does not take into account those. It only takes into account that um, there is one input and there is one sole output which is all the waste that's coming out. Okay, ecological footprint seeks to take the additional step of estimating the area okay, whereby all this is being done. So what it means is that, why do I say it's an, uh, why, why does it say that it's an additional step? Okay, basically because the footprint will show you that this metabolism whereby there is an input and output going through, it will show you exactly how much land is consuming this amount of input and this amount of output. Okay, whereas the metabolism th- could be just very generic. It could, I could just tell you that, oh, the city of Singapore is, is consuming this much input and take, throwing out this much output. But I don't tell you exactly how much land it is. It could only be in the in the area of Orchard or it could only be in the area of somewhere. So the footprint basically seeks to measure for you, let's say, how many acres of land it goes out. Okay, could, for example, Singapore's footprint could be 20 times its actual land area size. Okay, but the urban metabolism is only for the city of Singapore. So if you can see, there's actually a huge difference, right? One of them shows how severe, which is the footprint, shows how severe and extreme a possible um, metabolism could actually be taken as compared to that which just claims a very very generic statement All right so exam requirements very very simple be able to explain and um, reason out why the urban metabolism and ecological footprint are important indicators in every CDK essentially just to put it in, in, in short they help to summarize how much waste the country is producing how much it is consuming and what kind of strategies should be implemented thereafter as a result of the size of the footprint or the extent of this metabolism. Okay, so just know the rough differences between the two. Okay, use evaluation to justify your answer. Okay, um, use evaluation to explain and um, argue which one is the better um, indicator. Okay, and lastly, it tends to be 12 mark essays okay, or tested in your case study data response questions. Um, so over this, this part of urban metabolism and... and Ecological footprint is actually very very short, okay, but it's actually very very simple. You just need to understand that they are both kind of like subsets of each other. Just that one of them measures the land size, one of them takes the whole thing as a system, and then basically every system has an input as an output. That is basically how it works. Just to show you that this land, um, this city, okay, is consuming how much and is releasing how much waste. So that's essentially what these two indicators are to help you measure and implement certain strategies that can help to reduce the footprint size and help to make the metabolism a more circular one. Alright, so if you did enjoy this video, okay, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Okay, let me know that you're enjoying this content, right? Um, as well as to give this channel a subscribe. Okay, that would be great. Okay, stay tuned for more videos. Next part will be uh, on the actual strategies itself, which are very important. Okay, it could come out for essay questions, a huge essay question, in fact. Um, so if you have got any questions, do leave it down in the description below. Not description, sorry, the comment section below. Um, I'll look at it and uh, give it your, uh, give you, give you an answer if, if I can. All right. So if not, I'll see you guys in the next part. Till then, bye bye.